Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Kinsey. And today, we're here to talk about some great games for your Nintendo Switch that are under $20. Alright, let's take a look. All right, so I'm gonna go first, and the first game that I wanna talk about, because I think it's so awesome, is Immortal Redneck. Have you heard of this game? <laughs> I have not, but I am intrigued. It is a really weird game, but it's pretty awesome. So basically, this is a first-person shooter set in Egypt, and it has a lot of things that are really cool about it. For one, it's very old-school shooter. So we're talking like Quake, Doom, Serious Sam, those kind of games where you're basically just running around, shooting everything. I don't think there's any plot whatsoever, at least certainly no <laughs> plot I've ran into, and it doesn't really matter. What's cool about this game, though, is that it is roguelike in that it is randomly generated every single time you play. That's pretty sweet. So it's a first-person shooter that's randomized like that. And it's set in Egypt, and there's a bunch of really cool things about it. The number one thing for me, when I hear randomly generated, that can either be a really great thing, or it can be something that is kind of not so great. This is this lands safely in the awesome category. Like, you can really tell that the developers knew how to mix up how those those levels are built so not only just in like what they place in there but also the verticality of it there's some levels that are incredibly deep there's some of them that are big and essentially what happens is that you walk into a room and you're locked in there until you take out all the enemy oh that's cool and what's great too because it's randomized you think well how am i going to get through this thing with without getting lost the mini map is is always showing you where like the next door is so it's a fantastic game, really well designed. Also too, uh, it's very much like an RPG and very roguelike in that if you die, which you will always die, <laughs> uh, you have coins to spend to upgrade your skill tree. And so even when you're dying a lot, you're still progressing because you're still upgrading your character. There's also other characters that have special abilities that, that you can unlock. Um, one little tip for people though that I highly recommend is try to get double jump as soon as possible because the main goal in this game is to try to get to the top of the pyramid. And so you are always trying to go up and so having double jump unlock as soon as possible will help you greatly. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's a fantastic <laughs> game. Uh, it also has motion controls. I didn't really play around with those too much, but I know people were really excited about that, especially people who are not necessarily good with uh, with the thumbsticks on a shooter. You can use motion controls, so pretty cool. That's awesome. So it's not roguelike in the sense that it has permadeath? No, it's the opposite of permanent. That's nice. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good point. Is it's that the die a lot? It's the die a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will. You'll progress by dying in this game. Sweet. But I put a ton of time into it, and it, uh, it's very addictive. And for my first game, I'm picking Battle Chef Brigade. This game, like, kind of came out of nowhere for me. I know it kind of blew up on the internet, but it's such like a cool thought. Like, I think IGN put it that it's. Like, the plot is Iron Chef meets Tolkien. Hmm. I know, right? Weird. <laughs> that won me over. I was like, I need to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> so you play as Mina. She comes from a small town working in her family's restaurant, but she's got bigger dreams. She's going to go off and try to join the Battle Chef Brigade. And to get there, you have to go through a number of challenges hmm. in, like, this capital city place. And... It has kind of visual novel aspects. It has some like daily puzzles that you can do. It has platforming and like action combat. Hmm. But in the end, it's really just a match three game. Really? Yeah. I love <laughs> match three games. Yeah. I'm, I'm addicted to them. When you break it down, that's kind of what this is. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because you use flavor crystals to flavor and make your dishes. And all those really are is you have like the green ones resemble earth flavor, water, fire, things like that. Hmm. And you can start to make more complex dishes. And the more kind of ingredients you put in, like the more complicated your dish gets, it'll level up, the more points you'll earn. Hmm. But what I think is really cool about this game is when you do a challenge, you start in the kitchen, it's very Iron Chef. They're like, the people are here to battle it out. Oh, it's really? It's very like ostentatious. Get, get, and like, Getting the audience hyped up. <laughs> yeah, it's very much like that. You have like a, all the like contestants have nicknames. You're the Iron Stomach. Okay. <laughs> so it's very like Iron Chef. But once the match starts, you have to go outside then and gather your ingredients. 
huh. which is really cool. Is that match three or? Nope, that is oh, okay. platforming action combat. I see, okay. And it's so fun. And you kind of have to weigh your odds because all the challenges are timed. Hmm. So you can, the more difficult enemies yield better ingredients, but they also take longer to kill and you might die in the process. Hmm. So you have to decide, am I just gonna like gather some berries real quick and run back in and cook? Hmm. So I really like how you have to prioritize your time and do you want to take that risk to make a better dish. Okay. And so once you get all your ingredients back in the kitchen, you can add them together, do the match three, and you have to present it to the judge. And of course, all the judges have different flavor profiles. So there's always the secret ingredient, just like in Iron Chef. Hmm. And, but then the, the judges will be like, you know, I really like spicy dishes. So then you're like, okay, I gotta do this, I gotta make a dragon dish, and it's gotta be spicy. Okay. But there's so much going on, and the writing's great. It has kind of a Miyazaki-ish kind of art style. Looks very hand-drawn. All the backgrounds, I think, are hand-drawn. Hmm. And it's beautiful. I love it, actually. Okay. Well, it's funny you mentioned <laughs> hand-drawn, mm -hmm. because the next game I want to talk about, actually, is very hand-drawn. Have you played the Banner Saga yet? I've seen so much about it. It looks beautiful. It is. So th one of the things, I didn't realize this until I was doing some research. Uh, so the Banner Saga is, a, is an epic RPG. It's part of a trilogy. And uh, as a matter of fact, depending on when you watch this video, either the third one will, will be out or is coming out. So, But here's the thing, though. It's developed by people who, from Bioware. Oh. That's why it's so quality. Hold the phone. Yes. Yeah, so ex Bioware uh, employees left there, obviously, did a Kickstarter, and that's what that's where the first uh, Banner Saga came out of. And the graphics, as you guys are seeing on the screen here, are absolutely gorgeous, hand-drawn. Um, basically, like I mentioned, it's it's part of, a, of an epic trilogy. So what's nice is that each game is not too long. They're about 10 to 12, maybe 15 hours, and um, like I said, hand-drawn, excellent story and writing, laugh out loud. This is one of those games too where depending on what you choose, so you're gonna choose how the story progresses. You're gonna have to make moral decisions about who you keep, who lives, who dies. And sometimes it's rough, but again, it carries through the game all the way, supposedly till the third game. That's cool. It is very cool, very well written. Um, and then basically the, the way it works is that it's kind of two games where you are in the story-driven part where your your clan is traveling through the countryside and, and running into people, running into enemies, running into friends and foes. And then it goes into a uh, isometric tactical turn-based combat system. And that is also really well thought out as well. So you can tell that these people, these developers, played a lot of these type of games. Those graphics are also hand-drawn. Uh, multiple difficulty levels, I wanna mm. mention that because this game is brutal. Oh. <laughs> it's tough. And I played a lot of these games and initially I was dying a lot because you really have to think through combat. You have to plan, you have to know exactly whatever all the stats are. It's very cool. I absolutely love this game. So uh, looking forward to playing the second and third one. And I know that those are coming to the Switch as well. Oh, that's awesome. That's the series I've had my eye on for a while. I think yeah. it's been on my Steam wish list for like way too long yeah. and I don't really play on Steam. Yeah. So. Switch. That should be where it's at. It is. It's nice to have it on the go, for sure. And my next game is actually one that, if you follow me on any sort of social media, I won't shut up about it. You right. know. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, that, and it finally came to Switch, so you know what? Now it qualifies for this video. Woohoo! <laughs> and that is Night in the Woods. It's, it's kind of a hard game to categorize, because it's not... It's not a walking simulator. It's not really a point and click adventure game. It's kind of somewhere in between. Hmm. But it has so many secrets to discover that it's like way more than meets the eye. And when you get down to it, it's a 2D action platformer. But what's really cool is it's just like small town America, but there's something sinister happening and you don't quite know what it is yet. You think it might just be all you, but the premise is that you come home from college because you drop out and you're kind of having that like early 20s existential crisis hmm. and you came back to your hometown your friends all have jobs and moved on with their lives and you're like i'm back <laughs> and at first Ready to party yeah and at first that's exactly what it is you go to the woods and you drink and you make a fool of yourself because you see your ex-boyfriend <laughs> This is very relatable because, I mean, I think we've all had kind of those moments in our mm -hmm. lives. And it, it, the dialogue is so good. Hmm. It's written super conversational, so I had a smile on my face, like, the whole game. Huh. 
And it doesn't just have, you know, the adventure and, like, story elements. It does break up gameplay pretty good. Like, there, you you get the old band back together, so there's a rhythm game part. Oh, actually, band. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, you play bass. Not great, but <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. First band practice, they're like, we have your old bass. And you're like, what? I don't know how to play. And they're like, you got it. It's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> But it also deals with mental illness in a really cool way because <laughs> you kind of see something's going off with the main character, but you're not quite sure what it is yet. Mm -hmm. But you kind you also get to play within her dreams. So interesting how a lot of games recently are really starting to dig a little bit deeper into mm -hmm. kind of situations that you know normally aren't explored in games. Yeah, yeah, and this does it in a really beautiful way. Yeah, where it's not like oh, well, something's wrong because May is depressed. Like, it doesn't outwardly say it. Huh. So it does it in such a beautiful, artistic way. It still keeps it kind of lighthearted and funny most of the time. Right. <laughs> it gets a little dark. <laughs> but it's just such a fantastic game. And I mean, I originally played this game over a year ago. And I still won't shut up about it. <laughs> so <laughs> that is, That's cool. Yeah, it's definitely a game we're checking out. Huh, okay. Well, next up for me is a game that's very different than that yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's fantastic and I was so excited to see it came to the switch that is called the framed collection so this is two games and they are puzzle games unlike anything I've ever played personally myself mm -hmm. so the way that this works is that it's a it's kind of like a film noir where you are a spy you're not exactly sure what's going on in the beginning of the game where you're a spy you have a briefcase you're trying to basically get away from the cops and it's very much it looks like a comic book so your character will run across a panel and then in the next panel, there may be a cop standing there. Well, you get caught, but you can move the panels around. So for instance, if there's a panel that's below that that has like say an alleyway, you put that panel first, your character runs, hits the alleyway, and then, then it goes to the panel with the cop. So you can rearrange the story in real time. What? It's awesome. Oh my God, yeah, that sounds it's amazing. It's awesome. <laughs> so that's how this game works. It's very simple, yet it gets complex as it goes along because you have more panels in there and you, you have to kind of think about, you have, you have to sort of think about the different panels and okay, my character would hit here, go down the alleyway, let's move this up here. Or like like if, if the character uh, encounters a, um, a ladder or a, or a pair of stairs, well, that'll take them up above the cop. And then you can rearrange it in any way you want. It's really cool. It even gets crazier later on when you can actually turn panels. So for instance, uh, something that might be a stairs going up, you can turn it to going down. It's, like I said, it's unlike anything I've ever played before. It doesn't overstay its welcome. Each game is, I think, about three to four hours long. You're blowing my mind right now, oh, by yeah. the way. <laughs> it's so, so cool. And again, it's, it's unlike anything I've ever played personally. So when it came to Switch, I was very excited I had to rebuy it, so. And next up for me is Oxenfree. A game I've heard of, but I know nothing about. And it's funny, because when I started it, I was in that camp. Okay. Like, I had just, like, heard a decent amount about it, basically in title only, like, gotta check out Oxenfree. And I yeah. was like, what is this? Yeah. And so when I bought it, and I didn't really know what to expect. And guess what? It's like a horror game. <laughs> huh. From that, from that title, I would not guess that. No. And it's way different than what I was expecting. So the basic premise is every year in this small Pacific Northwest town, hmm. like a bunch of teenagers go to this island that's like a decommissioned military island kind of turned tourist trap. Hmm. So this is basically a ghost story. But the way they started off is so cool. You're like in this cave and they're like, yeah, you know, the kids who come here, they say if you stand by these rocks and tune into the radio, some weird stuff happens. That's where you actually signal the ghost for the first time. And they kind of talk in weird military, like almost riddles. Like they use like the language for the alphabet with military thing that I can't think of. Tango. Oh, okay. I know. What you, I don't know what it's called either. <laughs> I don't know what it's Tango, called. Tango, Bravo, all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. So they like use a little bit of that, and then at one point they're like, "Is leave possible?" And you're like, "I guess." Hmm. So they're basically now you're stuck, and they're like, "We're gonna get off this island, and they're gonna help us," hmm. and then you end up in all these weird like time loops and like it just gets really? crazy fast oh, okay. yeah and the in and this game it's you know 2d rather unassuming looking but it had like i jumped a couple times oh really yeah it had jump scares. not very many but i was like oh damn <laughs> ah. and it's just not what i was expecting at all and the main part of this game is the story 
It does have the radio mechanic and it has a few other things and platforming and things like that, but it does have branching dialogue. And the way it does it, I think is really cool. Like it's very conversational. Someone's talking to you and then you get three dialogue boxes above your head, but they're like timed basically because mm. it's, it's conversational. The yeah. conversation's happening in real time. Okay. And if you don't respond, the conversation will continue without you. Oh, interesting. Which I think is really, yeah, really cool. Yeah, that is cool. It keeps it going. Yeah, you don't, there's no time to wait. Because, <laughs> I mean, like, if we're talking and you're like, hey, Kinsey, what about this? And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I would assume you've fallen asleep. <laughs> yeah. But I just really like the way they did it. Okay. And what's great about this game is it is $19.99, but it goes on sale all the time for $4.99. That's what I bought it for. Yeah. Like, a while ago, and I think at that price point and the amount it goes on sale, it is so worth it. Hmm. Okay. Well, speaking of horror themed games, mine is also that. It's funny how that, that, that worked out that way. <laughs> um, this is called Death Road to, Ca to Canada. Oh, I'm in. I know. So <laughs> this is another game where a lot of people are talking about. They were so excited it was coming to the Switch um, and I had to pick it up. So basically what this is, this is the Walking Dead meets Oregon Trail. <laughs> and <Sorry. laughs> yeah, I know. So so you know the classic Oregon Trail is right like you're 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 in a covered wagon, you're trying to get to Oregon, you're you're going through all these trials and tribulations to get there. Uh, this game's very much like that. So you start in Florida and you and your buddy hop in a car, it's zombie infested apocalypse in America, but you, you get an inkling that up in Canada, they're safe. And so that's the plan is that you need to survive a certain number of days on the road to get to Canada. And I've come so close. Oh my God, so this game is so much fun. So basically it's completely randomized every single time you play it. Everything mm -hmm. is randomized. The people, the locations, the, the stuff you encounter, the weapons, all of it. And it's so brilliant because like the Oregon Trail, you run into scenarios where, you know, you're, you're cruising down the road and maybe you meet up with some, you know, a random person who is, seems come crazy out of their mind on the site. Do you help them? Do you, do you leave them there? And that can have repercussions as it goes on. Um, a lot of moral choices. It's a very funny game. Surprisingly funny for being a zombie game, but laugh out loud. Like at one point uh, I picked up Elvis. <laughs> and and he sings <laughs> and uh also too another thing that's kind of funny is that you can also create your you can create your own characters that may or may not show up in it so i created myself on the main menu and sure enough in my game after a while metal jesus showed up but i don't know in what condition he is so oh. so do i trust metal jesus do i not uh, it, it, thankfully it turned out that uh metal jesus was a ninja <laughs> Oh, sweet. I was going to be like, well, I've been down that road before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so it, it's definitely a really fun game. Um, so it has the Oregon Trail aspect of it. Every once in a while, a couple times a day, you have to get out of your car and forage for supplies or mm. weapons or try to find people. And uh, that's really fun. So you're trying to find gasoline for your car. You're trying to find medical supplies, food, weapons, stuff like that. Absolutely charming game. Uh, so much fun. It's one of those games where when you die, you just want to do it again. You just want to, okay, because I, 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 I've never been to Canada, like in the game. Gotta get there, man. I gotta get there. I want to survive. <laughs> I want to see what happens. Although knowing this game, don't spoil it for me, but it's probably messed up. It's probably funny when it gets there. So that that's my guess. <laughs> so next up for me is Golf Story. And I think this is actually the only one on my list that's actually an exclusive. That's not on PC, that's okay. not on, now that I said it, it better be true. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really charming golf RPG. And what I love about it is it has the retro style graphics. So it reminds me of playing Mario Golf on the Game Boy. Okay. Like it just brought up all those like feelings again where yeah. I was like, this is the best. <laughs> like, I don't even like golf. <laughs> But what I love, it's such like a tale of an underdog. So it all starts, you break up with your girlfriend, you tell her, I'm gonna go be a pro golfer. And that goes well. <laughs> but, and you go back to the course that your dad originally taught you how to play golf on, is like the, the premise. Hmm. And you're, you have a lot of challenges ahead of you because you can't just walk into a golf club and be like, I'm gonna be a pro golfer. Everyone's like, whatever kid. <laughs> So you have like reluctant coaches, like a really disheveled course that hasn't been as well cared for in a few years, kind of like a shady guy who owns it. So you have like all these obstacles to get through hmm. before you even get to play golf. Like, hmm. 
So, but, so it, it's it's a really story driven yeah. RPG. Oh yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's not short on the golf though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it's awesome. Like the golfing feels so good. I believe there's eight different courses, so they they mix it up really well. Like there's a course that is like island based, and that one's kind of hard because it's like a bunch of little islands. Hmm. So it's a lot of water traps. <laughs> I remember when this game was announced for Switch, and I don't know what I, don't, I didn't buy it, but I mm. wanted to. I think it came out at a time whenever other games were out, and I just it kind of got lost in the shuffle. Yeah. So I'm really glad you're mentioning it here because kind of bummed. I, I want to pick it up. It's so good. Huh. It's so good. Uh. <laughs> I've never wanted to like pick up and play a golf game so much. The mechanics are solid. The writing is great. Like the actual story and it's very conversational the way they did the writing. Mm. And even with the little speech bubbles, sometimes the words are really little and sometimes they're gigantic. Okay. And sometimes they're like, well, I tried. And they like the speech bubble goes up and then it slants to the side. <laughs> Like, just every little nuance huh. about it. Like, it's really well done. It's really fun. And the golf is super solid. All right. Well, that's cool. All right. Well, next up for me is a shooter. I do love my shooter shooters. And on the Switch, there is no shortage of them. There are mm -hmm. a ton. And so I think for me, I'm always looking for the really good ones. And uh, the, this one right here is excellent. It's called Dan Maku. Um, Denmaku. Yeah, Denmaku Unlimited cool 3. I've actually been playing this game for a couple of years because it originally came out on iPad and mm. it was fantastic there. It's been ported over to Switch. Fantastic as well. Not much really to say about this one other than it is really well designed. It, it's, it's one of these games that understands what makes a good bullet hell shooter fun. Um, for one, not everyone's really good at these games, so it does have multiple difficulty levels, which oh, is that's nice. nice. Uh, another thing that's kind of. I don't know if it's unique to this or not, but um, it, it has a graze mechanic. So if you want to, and you, you want to really improve your game, you want to try to get your, your ship as close to the enemy bullets as possible, and you build up a meter that can uh, basically have this massive charge that turns all the bullets into like dollars or, or gold that you collect. Mm -hmm. That's um, dangerous. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's tough. You don't have to do it. Uh, the other thing I really like about this game that does really well is that in order for a bullet hell style game to, to be good in my book, it's very important to know where that hitbox is. Oh yeah. And this game has a very defined hitbox. So you know if you're in danger or not. And so, uh, again, just really well designed. It has an amazing soundtrack by a Japanese hard rock metal band. Whoa, what? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we're gonna be able to play it in this video because I don't wanna get a copyright strike, but trust me, it's amazing. It fits the game perfectly. It's uh, definitely a really well-made bullet hell shooter on the Switch, so check it out. That sounds awesome. It is. <laughs> and my last game is Cat Quest. Oh my gosh. You were so excited oh when gosh. this got announced. You guys. <laughs> This game is incredibly self-aware of how ridiculous it is, which is one of my favorite things about it. It just makes it super charming, and you're going on a possum adventure <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> full of tons of cat puns. And if you're a cat person, like I am, right. <laughs> it just you know doubles the charm. Yeah. But it's also a really fun RPG. Hmm. So the basic premise of this game is your sister gets kidnapped by this evil like wizard guy who uh, brought the dragons back to the land because the land used to be at peace, of course. Of course. And then you find out you're actually a dragon blood, which is an ancient bloodline of the only cats who can defeat dragons. Hmm. It's kind of skyrim -y. Yeah, yeah. But I liked it. And I think it was very aware that it was channeling Skyrim. Yeah. So... <laughs> But I mean, I love Skyrim. I love cats, mush them together, but like, not exactly. Cause it is like very indie. It is pretty simple. The gameplay is very a slash and dodge kind of mechanic, but it makes it enjoyable. Like you're also not just like kill, 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 kill. When you start, you actually do have to dodge or okay. else you'll die. Oh, cool. <laughs> and you can get upgradable magic spells, which are sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's so fun. It does get to a point where you are like godlike. And I do like this in games. We were where, talking about this, yes. Yeah, yeah, like, and it's not till the, like, pretty much the very end. So it's, right. it's fine. But, but like, it is really fun at the end of these RPGs mm -hmm. when you are just like mowing down people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And you've earned it. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And the secret weapons and the gear in this is great, so you better find them. <laughs> okay. They're 
so good. <laughs> and you get really great upgrades that'll expand the world a little bit, like being able to swim and things like that. So you can get to different islands. And there's even some like secret islands that are super cheeky super fun <laughs> so worth it to explore in this game and yeah like i said it doesn't overstay its welcome it's not too long but it is an rpg it has really fun satisfying gameplay sometimes the dungeons can get a little bit stale because they're not super creative but you know for the price of this game i don't think it really hurt that at all for me but i loved it you know it's funny i'm thinking about this the amount of variety on the switch is it, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, there's a little of everything on this thing. I mean, first-person shooters, I, we had all these puzzle games, RPGs, indie games. It's amazing. Yeah, and like I was telling you earlier, I was actually having trouble pairing my choices down to five. Yeah. I realized for half the time I was thinking about it, I had six. <laughs> and I was like, oh, crap. I did, too. I did, too. <laughs> I know. And so we want to here at the end, just mention a couple things here. One, you know, we chose games that are $20 or under, but actually mm -hmm. a lot of these go on sale. Oh yeah. And it, Nintendo is putting these, you know, not only these games, but all sorts of games on sale all the time. So what I do is if a game comes out and I'm interested in, and maybe it's $29, I add it to my wish list. Oh yeah. And I mean, why not? Right. And then who knows, maybe a month or a week or Two months from now, it'll be 50% off. Mm -hmm. I was looking on there today and actually, uh, I forget what game it was, but it was 80% off. It was basically nice. like $2 when it was normally 20 or something. Yeah. So, I know. Oxenfree does that all the time. Yeah. It's like five bucks all the time. Yeah. So good. Which, which, you know, as you guys noticed, we covered all digital games in this video. We obviously are physical collectors. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if there were physical versions of this at the time of this, we would prefer that. But I, the reason why I bring that up is because when they're digital and they're cheap, that's usually when I'll buy those. Yep. You know what I mean? And if, you know, some of these games I love so much that if down the road they came out physical. Yeah, yep. absolutely. I'd, I'd probably I'd be first them. in line. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. So we'd love to know down in the comments, you know, so many games on the Switch, which ones would you like to see in a part two? Because mm -hmm. we already have a couple games for that as well. We'd love to know what you guys think. So uh, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Kinzilla, K-I-N-S-Z-I-L-L-A, -L -L and on YouTube. Awesome. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and take care. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you may have noticed these crazy and bumpers that I have at the end of my video. And uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Josh from Mushface Comics. He is the guy who creates these for me, and he surprised me the other day by sending me this one of me rocking out doing air guitar, and I thought that was so dang funny. So if you like this kind of artwork and these kind of grossly entertaining style graphics, definitely check out his website. It is mushfacecomics.com. He's got a bunch of this really cool stuff up there, so check it out.